Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, pleased to be here today with, uh, with uh, a couple of my friends, uh, one of them who I've known for what, 30 years, 35 years. 30 years. Uh, and we both happen to ha share the same heritage. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're both Slovenians. So half, you're half Italian, right? Half Italian. So he can relate to you, Peter. Half Italian. <laughs> <laughs> He's Irish. I'm half Irish. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 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 Congressman Overstar, as many of you know, is chairman of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee and the House of Representatives. And, and Peter uh, DeFazio is the chairman of the Subcommittee on Highways and Transportation. Uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about uh, the future of our transportation bill. First of all, I'd like to say that I think the administration has a dilemma. And, uh, you know, some are advocating for a second stimulus bill. Others say that we can't afford it. And uh, if we did another one, we'd have to borrow the money. Uh, there has been some talk about how effective the stimulus bill has been. Uh, I think most of you know I tried to s support that stimulus bill, but ultimately did not support it because I didn't feel there was enough money in shovel-ready projects. And one of the areas was transportation, where there was about $27 billion in it, and most of us thought that we could do $58 billion. In my state, we had shovel-ready for about $2.4 billion, and we get a little bit less than about a billion dollars is, wh is what we got. So in my state, people are hurting, and they're saying, George, what are you doing about it? And uh, uh, in May, our unemployment rate was 10.8 percent. And they're saying, you know, where's the, where's the jobs? And uh, so I, uh, <laughs> the fact is that the stimulus bill that's money getting from Ohio, in effect, has really kept the state from falling off the cliff in terms of the last highway bill, because the last highway bill, as you can see from this chart, it, it, the money that it was supposed to, the things it was supposed to buy, this is 2005, it's just gone down. So the fact is this, that the current highway bill is not buying as much as what we anticipated that it was going to buy. In fact, from 2003 to 2009, there's been a 48 percent drop off because of inflation and highway spending. And with the prevailing uncertainty regarding highway funding projects, the construction industries laid off 14 percent of its workforce. The unemployment rate among the construction trades is two times higher than the unemployment rate in the United States economy generally. A transportation reauthorization bill, a multi-year, would be a real stimulus to the economy. A highway reauthorization, uh, reauthorization bill is a jobs bill. In fact, according to the Department of Transportation, for every $1 billion spent on transportation creates 47,500 jobs. Now some congressional leaders and the administration are talking about blowing this golden opportunity to have a reauthorization of the Surface Transportation Bill by advocating that we ought not to do anything on it until March of 2011. And most of us feel it's too late. Why not move on a multi-year robust transportation bill that's going to make a real difference for the American, uh, American people? Uh, tomorrow in the uh, Environment and Public Works Committee, there's going to be a provision to uh, extend this to 18 months. And I can say to you today, as I say to my colleagues, I'm going to oppose that extension for 18, uh, 18 months. What I'm trying to say to here today is, look, we have an opportunity to really have a bill that will stimulate the economy, create jobs, improve the environment, improve the competitive position of the United States of America in terms of our competition in that global marketplace. It's a wonderful opportunity and we'll pay for it rather than borrowing the money as we have in the past for some of the stimulus that we've done to our economy. I'd like to now call on my good friend Jim Oberstar. Jim, I want you to know, has done an absolutely fabulous job, along with Peter, in terms of putting together uh, what I consider a robust, break the mold highway bill that's going to be so much different than what we've had here before in our country. And I think as people really get a sense of what you're both trying to do, and by the way, on a bipartisan basis, I saw John Micah the other night, and John says, hey, we're for this on a bipartisan basis, that when the American people see what it's going to do, and Jim is, will speak eloquently to that, they're going to say, this is something that we want to get done, and this is something that we're willing to pay for. Jim? 
Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I've known Senator Voinovich since he was mayor, lieutenant governor, governor, and now senator. He is a builder. He, uh, as a mayor, would uh, enter the mayor's office in Cleveland at 7 in the morning and wouldn't leave till 7 o'clock at night to have dinner with Janet. Uh, he didn't go to groundbreakings or ribbon cuttings. He just worked and built Cleveland out of its economic hole and put it on a sound footing. And he did the same with the state. And that's why when he speaks, the Senate should listen, the administration should listen, even if they aren't listening to us on the House side. He knows how to build, to invest, and to grow. And that is what this bill will do. It's no longer my little uh, schematic of uh, how to transform the surface transportation program of America, how to recreate and restructure the Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Transit Administration, how to rebuild cities, how to restructure metropolitan planning organizations, how to uh, put America on the move again, do uh, uh, mill and overlay in uh, six months instead of three years, build transit systems in three years instead of 14 years. We've got a 775-page bill that says this is how to do it. This is our roadmap for the future. There is no need to talk extension of time. This is an administration that came in promising change. Instead, they're talking the same old thing. We had 12 extensions of current law in fashioning the current safety legislation under the Bush administration. Because of an, an administration in the White House, the OMB, and the rest who just didn't understand robust investment in surface transportation and the importance that meant for job creation, economic growth and development, mobility of our economy. They didn't understand that the interstate highway system gave America its greatest spurt of economic growth in history of this country. And we need to sustain that growth by sustaining the investment in surface transportation. And that is what this legislation will do because of various forces in the economy, uh, the uh, revenues into the Highway Trust Fund have been declining. And Senator Voinovich rightly pointed out the value of the construction dollar has been eroded by escalating steel and uh, 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 cement and asphalt uh, prices. They go into ready mix and asphalt cement. Uh, the uh, construction dollar has fallen 47, 48 percent over the last six years and, and accelerated that decline in just the last three years, as he pointed out, as his chart shows. That means that uh, the uh, Federal Highway Trust Fund will be below its $1 billion balance. It will still have enough money to pay states at the end of August. It will not be bankrupt. It will not be broken as the, as the uh, a common word so loosely used, uh, it will be below the $1 billion positive balance that the Federal Highway Administration properly likes to keep in place. But on uh, the week of September the 4th, the trust fund will go into negative. That is, we'll have less revenue in than it needs to pay the states, to reimburse the states. For, for under the regular 80-20 program, not under the stimulus. Uh, by the week of September 11, the trust fund will receive from Treasury $1.6 billion in remittances uh, against bills from all the state DOTs of $2.4 billion. It will have an $800 million shortfall. Uh, the week of September uh, 25th, uh, the uh, trust fund will receive $1.5 Five five billion dollars against two billion dollars in bills from the states, and by October eighth, uh, the estimates are that the trust fund uh, will uh, will have revenues of two billion dollars against one point six billion dollars in bills from the states. That's due to a, an anomaly in the last uh, quarter of the safety legislation that we crafted in 
uh, in uh, 2005. So that means the, uh, the, the, the trust fund needs a short-term infusion. Do not confuse a short-term infusion with an extension of current law. Current law goes through the end of September. We do not need to extend current law. We do need to have an infusion of cash that could come from the uh, uh, general revenues of the federal government to compensate the trust fund for the $7.3 billion appropriations committees took out of that uh, trust fund over the past uh, six uh, years, seven years, uh, to pay for the effects of hurricanes, floods, other disasters. Instead of using general revenues, the Appropriations Committee took $7.3 billion out of the Highway Trust Fund, depleting its reserve, and now the trust fund is short. So that money should be repatriated, but we do not need an 18-month extension. 18-month extension will put us into the next presidential election cycle. It will take four years. It will not be a year and a half. I know how this body works, the House and Senate, that is. Inertia becomes the enemy of progress. And if they don't understand that at the White House, then I suggest those uh, highfalutin economists get out of their chauffeured limousines and get on the street and drive like the rest of America and choke in the congestion that is stifling America's economy and choking our cities. We are ready to move. And Peter DeFazio has been part of making us ready to move. Let me ask Peter to comment. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, just a couple of quick points. Jim covered a lot of territory, but uh, if uh, if the Obama administration should prevail uh, and we do the 18-month uh, fix, uh, we will walk away from at least one million jobs a year. That's the nominal difference between the increased investment in our bill and the status quo number. Uh, that they're promoting for 18 months. Actually, it would probably be an even bigger number than a million because the problem with an 18-month extension is that no state is going to initiate a three- or five-year project. Uh, for instance, uh, in this area, uh, the Woodrow Wilson Bridge took eight years, uh, and the, uh, the interchange mixing bowl took eight years. So if a state is looking at an ambitious new project, and they want to go uh, to the feds, and, and they're going to be told, well, geez, we don't, after 18 months, we don't know what your funding levels uh, are going to be. Uh, you, they might project out and think that they're going to be status quo funding, but then that would keep people away from making the enhanced investments they need to make. Uh, Los Angeles had a major uh, project uh, on, uh, you know, on I-10 uh, for HOV lanes to get people moving again, five years. Uh, up in, uh, in my uh, little northwest state of Oregon, we got kind of a major problem where we go over the Willamette River. Uh, Jim's been there to see this. We had to build, because of abrupt uh, bridge deterioration uh, and failure, on the longest river crossing on the entire I-5 corridor, the third busiest truck route in America, something that links the 12th largest economy in the world, California, to Oregon, Washington, Canada, and Mexico, plus uh, serving all our ports. Uh, that bridge was uh, at the verge of catastrophic failure. We had to build a $20 million temporary bridge, uh, and now it's uh, time to move forward with replacement. A $180 million project, uh, but it's a three-year project. Uh, this would be very short-sighted on the part of the Obama administration, and they're not even internally consistent because they say, oh, we want status quo funding, and I say, well, and you're going to stick with the policies of Safety Lou in the last century in terms of how the Department of Transportation is organized and run and the projects we're delivering and the lack of benchmarks and accountability by the state. Oh, no, no, we like all that stuff that's in your bill. Uh, we'd like some policy changes. And I say, well, but if you do the policy changes the way that Jim and I envision them to deal with uh, particularly our congested metropolitan areas, you're going to need more investment. So you can't, and, and you know, it doesn't make sense. So I said, you're closer to us than they are to those who are advocating just an 18-month status quo delay, as Jim pointed out, which would probably be four years. We cannot afford to walk away from a million or more jobs a year, projects that will make us more energy efficient, provide more on-time delivery for our products, get our people out of congestion, stop wasting fuel, and put people to work, plain and simple. Questions? Yes. Uh, 
Well, I think that, he, uh, that from what I understand, they're going to go for the 18-month extension, and, uh, and uh, several of us will argue that, uh, that, that, that we don't need the extension. I was very interested in the comment that you made today that uh, really it's the money that we need right now, not necessarily the extension, although there are people that feel that we ought to go six months or, or a year in order to give some uh, confidence that uh, that's going to uh, take place. But my concern is that we're going to take the heat off of are getting this bill passed and through the Senate and the money on the street. 